Hello everyone, my name's Josh. I'm a mastering engineer at Viking Lounge Mastering. And in this video, we're going to discuss, do you actually need acoustic treatment for producing music? So I guess we kind of just start at the start. What is the point of acoustic treatment? I know that some people think that treating a room for producing music like recording, mixing and mastering is used to stop the sound getting out, but that's generally not what we're referring to. When I'm talking about acoustic treatment for producing music, I'm more talking about improving the accuracy of the inside of the room. Basically, the goal of this is to make sure that your room isn't negatively influencing your production decisions. I saw this question asked the other day and someone basically said, what's the point of spending money on acoustic treatment when people aren't listening to the music that I'm working on in an accurate sounding room. They're listening in their car, on their AirPods, on their laptops, on their TVs, you name it. So what's the point of listening in an accurate room? <laughs> yeah, so I've said this analogy before, when you're trying to mix and master in an inaccurate sounding room, it's almost the same as shooting a basketball in the dark. Yes, you sometimes might get really lucky and get it in, but the majority of the time you're going to miss and it's actually going to be very hard to improve your skills when you can't see. With an accurate environment, the lights come on and you can hear exactly what you're doing. Pretty much, you know where to aim every single shot and therefore it's just easier to improve. If you ever want to become a better producer, a better mixing engineer and a better mastering engineer, then you need to be able to achieve consistent and reliable results. And working in an inaccurate room will make this much harder. I'm really lucky because I work at a commercial mastering studio and by far, this room is the most accurate room that I've ever listened to. And this allows me to know how my masters are going to sound in the car, on my hi-fi system at home or on my little Apple AirPods, which is super important as a professional mastering engineer at a commercial studio. I wouldn't be much of a professional if I did a master and then hoped it sounded good everywhere. I'd much prefer to know that it sounds good everywhere. But Josh, you might be saying, well, I'm used to my shitty room. I'm used to my shitty speakers and I do good mixes already. I think this kind of thinking is a little bit backwards to what you should be thinking about. This might sound a bit blunt, but to me that sounds like you're just not pursuing an accurate room because you think your results are good enough. For me, good enough isn't good enough. <laughs> that just barely makes sense. <laughs> Just imagine the results you actually would achieve if you had a more accurate room. And of course, it might take a small amount of time to get used to, but I 100% guarantee without a doubt that it'll make your work more consistent, more reliable and sound better in the long term. You'll probably even get work done faster as well. And I rarely speak in definites, but I can say that with 100% guarantee, your work will be better if you work in an accurate room. Every single engineer that I've spoken to that works in the suites at Viking Lounge have said that their work has improved greatly since they've been using the accurate rooms. Now, to be fair, I don't want this video to discourage you. Acoustic treatment can be quite complicated and it can be quite like a never ending pursuit. I like to think of the accuracy of a room on kind of a spectrum from not treated at all to completely perfectly treated. And there are a lot of small things you can do to work your way up this spectrum. Things such as speaker placement, desk placement in the room, your reflective surface absorption, your bass trapping, your diffusers, you could even measure the room modes of your room. For those of you who don't know, it's basically when certain frequencies build up between distances like walls and floors and ceilings. Those distances correlate to wavelengths and create different buildups of different frequencies in your room. And there's probably a million other things that you could do to make your room more accurate. So if you just try, slowly work up this spectrum, do small best practice things to make your room as accurate as possible with the setup that you have, I mean, that's all you can really do. If you are producing music solely or writing music at home and then sending your music to mixing and mastering engineers who work in properly set up studios, then having an accurate sounding room where you're working may not be as big of a deal. Although I'd still be lying to say that it wouldn't benefit you greatly. I think you can make better production and writing decisions when you actually work in a room. Things as simple as like picking samples for a song or picking instruments for a track that you're working on, 
This is generally just going to happen a lot quicker because you know exactly what you're listening to accurately. It's also worth mentioning if you have no budget or very little budget, then I'd recommend just working on headphones because you simply just don't need acoustic treatment. And that's all for today's video. Let me know in the comments where you're working on your music. Are you working at home at a commercial studio? And tell me what your acoustic setup is like. Do you have panels like these kind of things? Oh, before, before we go, you're probably wondering what that big thing is behind me. It's just a massive dense panel of fiberglass treatment because I've decided to treat my home office as just a little bit of a project. I'm going to build some more panels like this one, super heavy, dense panels right next to the listening space. Anyway, bit of fun if you're a nerd like me, but I'll make some videos on making these panels and kind of setting up a basic acoustic treatment setup. Anyway, I digress. Let me know what your acoustic treatment setup is like. I want to know where my audience is actually working on their music. If you want to check out some of my work, you can head to my website, joshbartellmastering.com. Potentially, if you want to work together, there's a contact form at the bottom. Otherwise, thank you for making it to the end of the video and remember to use your ears.